COVID's impact on Australia's health system thankfully wasn't the devastating disaster the experts said it would be. And while mRNA vaccines haven't been the silver bullet, so what does that say to those who have staked the reputations on them? Well, according to one of the world's leading vaccinologists and developer of Australia's protein-based vaccine, Nikolai Petrovsky, many won't admit their failure, while the honest experts will. And in the end, he says, it will be protein-based vaccines that will rescue the immunity in those who have had an mRNA vaccine. And joining us once again on The Informer is Professor Nikolai Petrovsky. Welcome, Professor. It's always nice to be here. Now, I read your post on social media, which I found fascinating because you're normally not as controversial in your commentary, but it seems your recent post has you been somewhat controversial. Well, you know, I don't think it's controversial because what I'm really focused on communicating with people is the real science. Like, so, you know, I would normally make a comment when a paper is published to allow people to understand what those papers are, are showing. So the, the irony is here, you're calling, you know, scientific fact controversy. And that's because what we've seen over the last three years is really an official disinformation campaign where we've, we've had, you know, particularly large social media organisations like Facebook and, and LinkedIn paid to actually invert the truth. In other words, they've censored anything that referred to facts and, and scientific papers, they delete. Um, and, uh, and, and then they put a, a false narrative in place of that. Um, and so the only reason my posts are controversial is they're actually based on fact. And, and I'm happy to cite, uh, as I say, all the literature and scientific evidence for any, any comment I make but for that, I was obviously permanently banned off, off LinkedIn for daring to actually state scientific facts because for whatever reason, those organisations have been paid to provide you know, misinformation to the public. And, and as a scientist, of course, you know, that's incredibly concerning. Mm. And are you aware of the credentials of those who chose to... Um, and disrespect or disregard your position over the common narrative? Well, again, you know, the, the people who are doing what they call fact checking, which is actually finding the truth and, and deleting it, uh, none of them are, are trained scientists. They have no credentials whatsoever. Um, they're, they're, they're basically just everyday people employed by these organisations, Facebook and LinkedIn, to find out anyone who's actually citing scientific information that goes against the narrative of selling the mRNA vaccines um, and, and deleting that information and, and ultimately deleting the, the scientists who are posting that, whether it's, you know, Rob Malone or Peter McCulloch or myself. I mean, we've all been, you know, physicians and scientists for our whole careers, we're all, you know, published hundreds of scientific papers in peer-reviewed journals. Um, these are the people they don't want the everyday person in the street to hear from. And that's why they've deleted us. I mean, uh, at the same time, they'll, they'll allow people who have no knowledge, no experience of science um, to, to put forward these, as I say, completely false narratives. Uh, as part of the messaging that's been going out to the population. So it is quite scandalous and it is systemic and it, it's, it's not just in Australia, we're talking basically the whole Western world. Um, and of course, those social media giants, um, you know, control most of the media people now see. So the fact that putting out all this misinformation uh, has enormous impact. And, and as I say, it's our obligation as scientists to try and, you know, um, reset that and, and say what the facts are. Um, and they call that controversial. I find that, as I say, it's like it does your head in mm. um, when, when you have like the truth police, whose job it is, is to make sure the truth is never heard. Yeah. And, and, and it's like the, the Department of Truth 
is the propaganda department. And we saw that under, you know, in 1984 in George Orwell um, was, you know, the first time we saw it obviously under the Nazis. Um, and, and we're seeing it now, you know, we have the truth police. Um, and it, it's not a society I want to live in. And I'm sure it's not a society the vast majority of people, if they were aware what was going on, would want to live in. But it's a society, you know, our governments uh, obviously clearly want us to live in. And that's a serious concern because I thought we voted them in to represent us. I didn't realise we were voting them in to give them totalitarian power to dictate what we're allowed to hear and what we're not allowed to hear. Yeah, it, it's... Um... I'm glad you mentioned Orwell. That, that was the first thing that uh, sprung to my mind. But we've even had the tail wagging the dog with APRA censoring doctors on what they can tell their clients and threatening them. Look, I think, you know, again, it, it's, it will, it's going to go down in history, in Australian history, as, as one of the greatest travesties um, of, of justice, the idea um, that you can actually remove the medical registration of a doctor for telling a patient what they believe the patient uh, should know and should hear in terms of getting informed consent. Um, that's the whole foundation of Western medicine is informed consent, which means a doctor telling a patient everything that they believe is relevant, even if it, it may be politically, you know, unpalatable or something the government don't want the patient to hear, the doctor actually has a legal obligation to tell the patient all the facts, nice or, or, or not. Um, for the target to believe they can come in and disrupt that, that whole relationship uh, and say doctors are not allowed to, to tell the truth to their patient because the target says so, it, it, it takes us back to you know, to times uh, that, you know, we don't like to reflect on, um, uh, you know, in, in history, because we, we know what the consequences of that are, where, where you disrupt that patient-doctor relationship. It's sacrosanct. Mm. Um, we've always accepted that for good reason. They have interfered in that sacrosanct relationship. And that, that has to stop, um, absolutely. Now, we've, we've seen a, a complete 360 from the early days of the control where we didn't know what we were dealing with, where we saw sunsets banned, not allowed to leave within five kilometres, couldn't stop if you're on your walk to drink your cup of coffee, playgrounds closed, to now it's pretty much a free-for-all, no masks, no get out, live with it, and a lot of saying, well, we're more vaccinated now but our case numbers are up. We have excess uh, mortality up, not necessarily from COVID, but people are dying from all cause. And, you know, the, the government has changed its approach there. Do you see the same in the scientific world, which you're a, a big player in? Do you see that um, conversation around that now where there's a little bit of people being more circumspect where they've gone, you know what, I was wrong or are they still sticking to the narrative that they had? Look, I think it's a mix. Certainly we're, we're, we're starting to see um, some journals, um, not the leading ones admittedly, but, but, but some of the middle ranking journals starting to publish scientific data um, that um, you know, uh, is not part of the narrative that identifies particular concerns, uh, particularly with the mRNA vaccines some of the negative things they may be doing in the body. Up till a few months ago, there was no way any of that data was ever going to be allowed, um, you know, to be published. Um, that's just a fact. Um, some of that information is, is starting to filter through. Um, you know, I think uh, Peter McCulloch has done a very good job of, of um, you know, disseminating a, a, and interpreting a, a lot of that data. Um, so that some of our colleagues are now for the first time actually seeing what we were seeing a year or two years ago because, um, you know, a lot of this data was being shared um, just privately because it couldn't be published. Um, so um, so that now the more mainstream doctors are seeing what was terrifying us, you know, a year ago, why we were saying, whoa, 
<laughs> you know, this whole, this is 100% safe, this is 100% effective narrative is completely false. There's all this data that, that says it's false, but it's not being allowed to get out there. Uh, I think now they're starting to see that and they're starting to wake up. And yes, so I think there's, there's a lot more questioning of what was going on over the last two and a half years uh, by an increasing number of, of my colleagues. Uh, we've had Tony Fauci, um, you know, basically at, admitting um, and, and apologising um, for you know the lockdowns and a lot of the things that obviously did harm but had no impact uh, on the pandemic whatsoever. Um, so, so I think yes, we are at a transition point, hopefully, where where you know, you know, the truth has to come out sometime. Um, and I think it is better that people admit if they got it wrong. And I, I, I take my hat off to Tony Fauci for, for actually conceding some of those points because a lot of these things that were done were very wrong. I think what happened in Victoria was a travesty. Um, we, we haven't yet, I don't think, seen um, some of our health officials in Australia, um, you know, reflect on um, some of their actions and whether it could have been done better and, and did it do more harm than good. Uh, and, and certainly I'm strongly in favour, we have to have a major inquiry. Um, you know, I, I think it has to be a Royal Commission at that level. Um, and, and I think it should be, you know, planned now. I, I, I think, you know, we're three years into this. Um, you know, there's no reason we can't have a Royal Commission now that starts. It's probably going to take a year to, to process all of the information. You can imagine how much there is. Uh, why aren't we starting that process right now? Um, I, I think it's time. Yeah, and we can say with 100% certainty, this will happen again in another shape or form. We've had the Spanish flu, we've had other pandemics. So the only thing that uh, can be done from having this Royal Commission is benefit. It can't do any harm. It can only help us in the future. And for those of you who've been following along, uh, with the Informer, and we've been fortunate to have access to Professor Petrovsky um, for a few years now, go onto the website, do a search for him, and look at back of his predictions or, or what he was saying two years ago. And I'm pretty sure you're going to find exactly what has happened. So hindsight's great, but this was uh, pretty predictive and fortuitous, and we didn't listen. So Professor, uh, always insightful and always great to have you and we'll look forward to speaking to you again. It's a pleasure. Thank you.